you'll, you'll see on the screen a, a picture of a Russian nesting doll. I'm sure you're familiar with these, but they consist of a, a large wooden figure that separates from the top from the bottom, and when you open them up, you find another wooden figure, uh, very similar, but smaller. And, and then you can take that doll and you can open it up and you'll find inside of it a similar doll but smaller and eventually you've moved from a large wooden figure to a very tiny wooden figure. This morning I want the Russian nesting dolls to be an image for us. In a moment we're going to open up the scriptures and we're going to hear a phrase the Apostle Paul says that when we've been raised with Christ, we're hidden with Christ in God. When you hear that phrase, I, think I want you to picture those nesting dolls that inside this large wooden figure is a smaller wooden figure completely hidden within. Imagine the church hidden with Christ in God. Imagine you hidden with Christ in God. If you join me in the scriptures, in a passage that I pray is very familiar to you at this point. Colossians chapter 3. We'll read the first four verses. <coughs> Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If you've got it open, can I hear a loud amen? amen. The scripture reads, Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Amen. Throughout this series, we're taking words from this passage and we're setting them in the context of this passage and we're setting them in the context of your life. And this morning we come to that word, hidden. The Apostle Paul was telling the Colossians and he's telling every one of us that if we've been raised with Christ, we are hidden with Christ in God. Amen. What an image. What an image for us this morning. The Apostle Paul was, was telling the church here that when they acknowledged their need for a Savior. He's telling the Colossians that when they acknowledged their need for a Savior, when they were raised with Jesus Christ, they were fully united with Him. We've discussed this in previous weeks. We've done the heavy lifting for this sermon in previous weeks. When the Colossians gave their life to Jesus Christ, they died with Christ. When they gave their life to Jesus Christ, they were buried with Christ. And when they gave their life to Jesus Christ, they were raised to walk a new life in Him. Amen. This is good news for us this morning, that our sin-stained life can be covered by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. <laughs> but this passage is telling us, it's speaking directly to us, that the moment, the moment that we acknowledged our need for a Savior and we gave our life to Jesus Christ, we were raised with Him to new life and hidden with Christ Amen. in God. That's a tremendous theological truth. 
a tremendous theological truth that we can be hidden with Christ in God, that our sin-stained life can be covered by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. While it's a tremendous theological truth, it also has practical power for us this morning. It has practical power for you tomorrow. If you've been here for this series, right? we are digging deep into these four verses. We've done the heavy lifting uh, of the theological weight in this passage. If you haven't been here, hopefully you just pick it up right? as, as we're going through it. But we've done the heavy lifting. So this morning, I really want to tease out the practical power of understanding that we are hidden with Christ. And I'm, I'm intentional here. and This is maybe dangerous in saying this. Uh, but I want this to be short. Because I want to tease this out. I want to get to the nitty gritty of the practical of this. And I want you to walk out knowing every word of what I've said this morning. No wasted effort. That we've heard the theological truth that you can be hidden with Christ in God. And I want you to walk out of these doors excited to live out the practical power of it. Amen. Amen. If you have your GPS, there's some blanks for you to follow along as we walk through this. But you, you're hidden with Christ. Again, that's if we've been raised with Christ. Right? If we have acknowledged our need for a Savior, we've been raised with Christ to new life. That means we're now hidden with Christ in God. And that means that you can face accusation with confidence. Sometimes that accusation will come from other fingers. People will point fingers at us and say, you're worthless. You're a failure. <coughs> you're a liar. Fill in, fill in the accusation. But as we've discussed in previous weeks, as we've read this morning, our identity doesn't come from the accusation. Our identity comes from the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. To whatever accusation comes our way, we could say this out loud or we could just say this to ourselves. Not true. I've been raised with Christ, and I'm now hidden with Christ in God. Sometimes those fingers come from other people. Sometimes we point those own fingers at ourselves. Right? We take our own fingers and we point them at ourselves because we know the deep, dark corners of our heart. And we could say, you know, I'm a terrible husband or I'm a bad mom or I'm a failure, I'm worthless, I'm no good. We can point the accusations at ourselves, but the theological truth still has the same practical power. We can say it out loud or we can say it to ourselves. Not true. Right? My identity comes from the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I've been raised to new life. I'm hidden with Christ in God. So you can face accusation of all kinds with confidence. You can also face doubt with assurance. This is similar to accusations, but, but doubt goes a little deeper. Right? To some of us, we, we, we feel very good in church. Right? We, we feel good when we're reminded of things that we know to be true. But then we get home, and Monday turns into Tuesday, and Wednesday turns into Thursday, and eventually we wind up on Friday, and some of that message has worn off. It's not so fresh in our memories. And perhaps it's been a rough week. Perhaps we've hit some road bumps. We've experienced some failures along the way, and we begin to ask questions like, you know, does, does God really love me? Or, you know, 
is that is that sin I just committed for the hundredth time? Uh, is that really forgiven? Like I could understand it being forgiven the ninety-nine times, right? But I just did it again. Am I really forgiven? Have I messed up? Have I sinned too much or too often? Right? Or, or, or sometimes we, we begin to pray and, and just it doesn't seem as if what we pray for comes to be. And in those moments of what we deem as God being silent, we begin to have doubts. <coughs> Being hidden with Christ in God means that we can face those doubts with assurance. Yes, God loves you. The scripture actually says that we can we can have proof of the fact that God loves us. That, that God actually demonstrated his love for us by the death, burial, and resurrection of the cross. That's God's demonstration of his love for you. Yes, you're forgiven. Yes, you are loved. Yes, God hears you. Why? Because your sin-stained life has been covered by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You are hidden with Christ in God. Be hidden with Christ it means that you can face heartache and heartbreak. And by that, I just mean everything. You can face heartache and heartbreak with hope. Perhaps you're looking at life right now and you're just saying, this is unbearable. Perhaps you're looking at life this morning and you're saying, this is just too much for me to handle. Perhaps you're just looking at the last week and you're saying, this is just awful. This is not the way I intended it to go. This is not the way I wanted it. This passage this morning, this imagery, tells us that right now we're hidden with Christ in God. And in this moment, we are hidden in, in the relationship, in the protection, in the, in the love of God. And as God is, has us hidden, we are awaiting a day when He will return and call all of us to glory. It's a message to us that right now, no matter what we are facing, whatever pain we're in this moment, it does not compare to the power of God. That whatever we're facing at this very moment, it does not compare to the beauty and the joy and the power of heaven. As the, the scripture says in another place, our light and momentary troubles nothing compared to the glory of God. Yes. We will one day experience. Why? Because we've been raised with Christ. The old us died. We've now been raised to new life and we are now hidden with Christ in God. A tremendous theological truth that has practical power for us right here and right now. You guys are familiar with the old hymn that speaks of this truth. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, Born of his spirit and washed in his blood. Yeah. That's, that, that's not an, an old hymn, right? It's not words on a page of a hymn book. It's not words on a screen. 
It's a theological truth that has practical power for us right now. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. We're heirs of salvation. We've been purchased by God. We're born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Him goes on to say, perfect submission. That's where we bow our lives to God. Right? In light of all that He's done for us, we, we willingly, we joyfully bow our lives before Him. Perfect submission. And what does that produce? All is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. <coughs> and what does that produce for us? This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. What a joy it is to be hidden with Christ and God. What peace it brings to be hidden with Christ and God. What assurance it brings to be hidden with Christ. What power it brings for us to be hidden with Christ in God. May we embrace that theological proof and may we, we walk out of these doors this morning ready to walk in its power. Let us pray.